Hello, Rich Evans. Hello, Mike. Uh, we're in our black void again. So that must mean we're doing another predictions video? That's correct. That's my prediction. Am I right? Your prediction is accurate. It is Rich Evans and Mike talk in a black void about Star Wars or Star Trek. What's the, what's the most depressing thing to talk about, Rich? Star Trek for me. Star Trek? Okay. Star Trek. I'm gonna say, we've, we've done a few prediction videos now. This is the hardest one. Like, you go into uh, the, you know, the Force Awakens and you think, well, it's been 30 years, what would you do with these characters after 30 years? And your, your brain can get going on things. And the and Han Solo movie, well, it's like, well, it's Han Solo, what are things we know about Han Solo? With this movie, with the rise of Skywalker, the last, what was, what was the last, what was the last movie called? The Last Force? <laughs> the Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was the weirdest second act of all time. Yes. Because it left us with no hooks for the sequel. I felt it too. This is it basically a dead end? Yeah. Uh, there is the trailer out, it's a teaser trailer. And I hope to fucking God, the full length trailer doesn't come out before I finish editing this video. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> waste our time but uh, the, that's that's what's out and then that's what we looked at um, so this is just me and rich looking at the trailer and the only other thing that I looked at was the Vanity Fair article there's like five stills there, there's a bunch of stills and then they, they give you some information um, which dispelled a couple of my ideas or I guess theories mm -hmm. whatever was that no the sand planet it might be Tatooine no it's not but it's called like Kasana or something. Um, I wrote it, wrote it down in my notes. Uh, and then there's, there's a snowy planet, uh, which is not Crate, the salt planet from the other movie. It's some new planet. And uh, there's a shot where they're flying through like clouds and it kind of looks like the planet from Rogue One where they attack that, that Imperial base. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's a little a smuggler thief land, like a Maz Kanata's castle, but not. Unless they try and tie that into the Death Star. I don't know. But anyways, know. so, uh, and then a couple of new characters. Um, Carrie Russell plays like a bounty hunter. Zor Zora Bliss or something. Um, and then there's another lady who's riding on a, a horse with Finn. Yeah. Uh, she has a character name. So I just want to get all that right so we're not just guessing. Um, and then the Knights of Ren. So th that's basically what we're going off of. And looking at who's writing and directing as well. Mm -hmm because that plays a major part. The Force Awakens, uh, written by J.J. Abrams and Lawrence Kasdan. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say, including us, say it was a retread of the original Star Wars film. Mm -hmm. Basically hit all the same notes, had the same plot points. The soft reboot mm -hmm. has been thrown around. And I attribute that to Lawrence Kasdan getting tapped on the shoulder. Come on back and write Star Wars. Uh, what else can you do with Star Wars? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I just write the same script again and change all the character <laughs> names and no one will notice. Um, and J.J. Abrams is a writing credit. Uh, we have written a, uh, a Spider-Man comic book. A long time ago, in a certain video I made, uh -huh. I said J.J. Abrams would be great at directing Star Wars films. Yeah. And I stand by that in the directing capacity only. Uh, after the, the prequels ended, right? 2005, then there was 2009 Star Trek, and that was a bad script, but a really fun science fiction adventure film. J.J. Abrams is all gloss. He's a terrible storyteller. You know, him and Alex Kurtzman, they're all like bad robot, right? Their whole thing is feeling over sensible plotting. Like what? What would be a fun thing to do and don't think about the ramifications? Just, oh, that's mysterious. Ooh, that's emotional. How does that fit into a larger narrative? Who gives a fuck? Just do it. It's like, it's like corporate short-term thinking ruining a business. It's like short-term profits, massive profits, and then they, they like ruin the industry. Like the, the video game crash of the early 80s. Just throw as many games out there as you can, and oh, what happened? We, we threw a bunch of shitty games out there, and now nobody wants games anymore. Oh, the industry collapsed. <laughs> 
the, the storytelling equivalent of that. Like like a Super 8. Do you remember Super 8? I haven't seen it. The, 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 the first version of Stranger Things? <laughs> Um, it's like all the Spielbergian 80s nostalgia shoved into a movie and it looks really nice and it's pretty, but ultimately it's, it wasn't memorable. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's that J.J. Abrams style. He's very good at visuals and pacing and excitement. Like star, the Star Trek movies are exciting, terribly written, but they're exciting and visually good. You, so J.J. Abrams, yes, directing, yes. Let him visually tell the story of someone else's script. Yeah. Don't write it. So if you split Spielberg in half, J.J. Abrams is, is the one half of Spielberg that's missing the other components. And the best part about Spielberg, he didn't write scripts. You say it's like you split Spielberg. I think it's somebody who grew up watching Spielberg movies, but they only focused on the one thing he did, and that's what they were fascinated by. Yeah. And he, he's like Spielberg, but without the complete package, yes. Uh, we have written a, uh, a Spider-Man comic book. Although, when you hand over an entire film to one guy who writes and directs, just completely out of left field. Uh, we get The Last Jedi. Mark, very understandably, wasn't thrilled about some of the choices in the script. It's if we find in that really good script, but I think J.J. Abrams was probably like, I'll do it. I'll do these movies, but I want to write the story mm -hmm. because I think he fancies himself a writer. Uh, we have written a, uh, a Spider-Man comic book. And uh, I bet you, of all people, are really looking forward to that Spider-Man comic. It's just so exciting. Uh, I can't believe it's happening. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I don't know why I think. them. Well, because they're great. They're great. You're great. Okay, so script by J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio. Writer okay. of Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and the Justice League. Is that a joke? No. This movie's gonna be awful. This movie's going to be awful. Don't you be a poo pooing internet armchair critic, Rich. None of these people have written anything good. J.J. Abrams with this mystery box bullshit. And what's his face who wrote two of the worst movies of all time? This is, this is just fucking, this is a fucking dream combination. And I don't like our odds. What the hell? Well, let's talk about the trailer. We get like eight things. The, the, more than half the trailer is Ray in the desert, like kind of running. Yeah. And, and, and then leading up to a jumping over of a TIE fighter, which we're going to assume is driven by Kylo Ren. Well, that's, that's the thing. That's the, one, that's the one thing when you're trying to figure out what they're going to do this movie, you can glom onto. Everybody, well, a lot of people hated The Last Jedi. And it's, it's non-plot twists, and there's gonna be probably a lot of work towards undoing that movie. Yeah, because I was gonna say, there was uh, implications that there are force-sensitive people out there, little children, yeah. the little stable hands in the, the casino planet, that he, he makes his like broom fly to him and he looks at the little rebel logo and he looks up at the stars, just like Luke looked at the twin sun setting, dreaming of adventures that are to come. Um, so those are little Jedis in, in the making. Um, Ryan Johnson le left that door open. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea that Rey is the last Jedi. I like that idea much better. And I'll explain why. Uh -huh. I don't like it. I don't like any of this. I like it because it, it subscribes to my terribly awful theory, which I don't know if anybody has come up with yet. But let me again preface. It's a terribly awful theory based on the fact that J.J. Abrams and the guy who wrote Batman v Superman are writing this script. Yeah. And based on retconning. What, what's your theory, Mike? Well, should we talk about the trailer more? Is there much to talk about? She, she jumps over a TIE fighter, then we see a blue planet, and then we see some forests. Here, here real quick, everybody. And we're gonna show quick images of what's in the trailer. Okay. Okay, Ray backflips over a TIE fighter. Yeah. Presumably flown by Kylo Ren. It's possible it's Darth Vader. Anything's possible at this point. But we're gonna assume it's Kylo Ren. The start of some battle. He's, he's out to get Ray, right? Uh-huh. Because that's how everything goes. A little battle, uh, boring. 
a little battle, eh, boring, big battle, end. But it's a neat visual. She does a backflip over, and I'm going to assume in the film, the lightsaber cuts the TIE fighter in half, and yeah. Kylo Ren goes, <laughs> and flies out, and then stumbles on the ground, and then they start laser sword fighting. Uh, then we see like this, uh, what looked like an A-wing fighter. I don't know what it is. It's flying through some kind of like snowy planet, and we see the hint of a city in the background, which I think is the thieves' den, the smuggler planet, something. Because that's uh, uh, there's a Car Carrie Russell plays Zori Bliss, a bounty hunter esque character. Okay. Kind of looks like a female Boba Fett. So there's something in Maz Kanata's credited in the film. There's going to be some kind of smuggler thieving subplot with. Uh, Lando probably as well. Uh, okay, then there's a Kylo Ren killing people in a forest setting with stormtroopers. Yeah. Kill somebody, I can't tell who it is. Could be a flashback. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, Kylo Ren reassembles his helmet. Poe and Finn are seen on Pasana, the desert planet. They just kind of show him looking at something. BB-8 has a new little friend. I don't know why they've given up on R2-D2 going on adventures. R2-D2 is always just like, has like a, like, like a blanket over him in the corner. Uh, Lando and Chewie are flying the Falcon, and uh, they come out of uh, hyperspace flying the Falcon. There's a battle on Pasana. They're flying what looks like a little Jabba skiff kind of thing. Now, where are you getting Pasana from? Oh, it was credited as being the desert planet. Oh! That, seen in the film. That throws my theory about the desert planet out the window. Okay. And then there's a shot, and I think there are uh, backpack, uh, jetpack wearing stormtroopers. They show little ships. They, at first I thought they were ships, but then when I looked at it up close, I think they're stormtroopers with jetpacks. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> this is what we got to work with. We see a Star Destroyer uh, on, I think, the desert planet, and I think it's an A-Wing crashing into it. Uh, it might have been that ship we've seen earlier. Yep. Don't know. And then lastly, there's a grassy, what looks like a grassy planet. And all the characters are coming up to this this cliff, and then we see the destructive r remnants of the Ruined Death, Star. Death Star. Ruined Death Star in the ocean. Yeah. And uh, all of us are to assume that that planet is Endor, the forest moon. Well, that's Endor. The, that's the only thing that makes any kind of sense. See, I was I was speculating it would have been a it would have been an interesting twist on things if the desert planet were actually Endor, mm. because the Death Star once the wreckage crashes, it just fucks up Endor's environment. I thought, maybe, you know, it was either, I thought it was either going to be a ruined Endor or we're going back to Jakku. Because in our theory about uh, retconning The Last Jedi, I figured they were going to go back on the, no, your parents were nobodies. They were nobody. They were filthy junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. <laughs> and we're going to go, oh, no, no, Ray, you're really blah, 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 Skywalker, something, something, Skywalker. They'll be back one day. And so I have, I have a couple of topics I want to talk about, and um, I don't know if you have any theories. Uh, the most important thing, I think, to mention is the Emperor's laugh at the end, mm -hmm. and Luke's famous line, no one's ever really gone. Well, I think Luke's coming back. Because I, 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 I have nothing to work with, Mike. So I'm just thinking, well, you want to undo The Last Jedi, nobody liked what they did with Luke. Nobody liked that he had abandoned the Force, which I actually thought was the most interesting part of the movie. But nobody liked that. So I think much like Gandalf, he's gonna be reborn through the Force. Okay. He's gonna be super in touch with the Force Luke, and he's gonna counter the Emperor spiritually at the end. He's gonna be wearing the same robes he was wearing in Return of the Jedi, the all black robes, but they're gonna be pure white. <laughs> Luke the White. Okay, Gandalf the White. Yeah, he's not even gonna use a lightsaber. He's gonna be super force in touch with the force Luke. I hate to say it, you're probably right. Yeah. Uh, he will reform his body from the force using elemental materials that all fly together. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> but he'll still look like old Mark Hamill. They'll, 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 they'll have his beard be really nice looking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be like super trim. And... Maybe they'll just like kind of de-age him just a little bit. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Not to where he's just young Mark Hamill, but where he's just sort of like nice looking. He's going to be super well-groomed Mark Hamill. Okay. Yeah, see, the, when you see the Death Star destruction, right? Uh-huh. And you hear the Emperor's laugh. My, my first thought was, uh, until I changed my mind, my first thought was, uh-oh, okay, here's the plot. Kylo Ren and the First Order want to destroy the Rebels. 
the rebels have made an agreement with Planet X, and Planet X has an army and fleet of spaceships that are so big they can possibly counter the, the First Order. Some bizarre species. You gotta help us! And Leia signs a treaty with them. Uh, that's the new rebellion. Uh-oh, they're, they're, they can match the First Order. Kylo Ren needs the ultimate power in the universe. They know a technological terror uh, is, is out of the question. Uh-huh. Don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. The ability to destroy a planet is insignificant next to the power of the Force. So we need something super powerful. The, the soul or the evil negative force essence, the dark side essence of the Emperor, still exists. It's okay. in the planet core. Crashed and the Emperor's ghost, his evil force essence, lives in the planet core. Kylo Ren wants to absorb that into his spirit force and he'll he'll just become like like you said, like a super Luke. Yeah. Like a like a dark phoenix, right? Where he could just like use evil force and just wipe out planets with his mind. That's what he's going after. Cause they're the one of the Vanity Fair photographs show Ray and, and Kylo Ren laser sword fighting on the top ruins of the Death Star. Yeah. Where it's like water is splashing on them and they're fighting on the, the junk of the Death Star. Uh, so Kylo Ren wants to get down there. We've got to stop him. That was theory number one. Then I came up with the wildest theory of all. Uh-huh. I'll add in my, my, my two cents about Kylo Ren and the Emperor. Yeah. These, these, these last two movies have really botched their villains. And then in The Last Jedi, they just gave up and cut him in half. And now we're left with Kylo Ren. But the way they have written Kylo Ren, he's a dipshit. He's too stupid to be the main villain of your series. And he's too evil to be redeemed. So we need a villain. And out of desperation, it's literally the only thing they could do was to invoke the Emperor. And you think it's going to be his essence? I, I think it's going. It's not just going to be an essence. It's going to be a consciousness. He's going to be aware. I think he is going to try and draw Kylo Ren to him in, with promises of "I will give you ultimate Force power, then you can have all of the Force." But he's going to double cross Kylo Ren because Kylo Ren can't be our main villain because he's a dipshit, and Rey has already beaten him like twice. So the Emperor is going to possess Kylo Ren for his new. Super Skywalker Force body. I don't think though it'll be end up being Luke versus the Emperor at the end. Uh -huh. Again, because you cannot just outside of the realm of the story and Star Wars speaking, you cannot build up Rey, Daisy Ridley, and then take it all away from yeah. her at the end. It will depends upon how hard they want to retcon. I don't think they'll do. They'll go that far to have Luke be the sole hero. He might, yeah, I'm sure he's gonna do something as super special Luke to help out, but Daisy Ridley has to be the hero. Um, I'll get into my wild fan theory now. Yeah, I wanna hear it, I wanna hear it. Uh, because I, I, I was thinking about it, and then there was a quote from J.J. Abrams that said, literally said, fuck it, uh, I'm just gonna do what I want. Uh -huh. Something like that. I, I don't remember the exact quote, but basically it was like, eh, this is the last film, fuck it and the Star Trek stuff was like crazy. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, I know what they're gonna do. I, what? what? What has been done in Star Wars? Technological terror. Technological terror. Death machine, yeah. gotta stop it, gotta blow it up. Uh, bad guy, two guys fight at the end. Uh, well, you know what they haven't done? What? A horrible time travel story. Oh my God. That is the dumbest thing ever. They are going full on Avengers Endgame. <laughs> and they are retconning everything. And there's a lot of clues. There's a lot of clues to this. A thousand generations live in you now. A thousand generations live in you now. Time. That's a line. Uh-huh. I'm going through this piece by piece. Uh-huh. The thing that, that, that um, tipped me off to this was Jim had mentioned that he's excited to see this movie, not to see the movie, he just wants to see the Millennium Falcon. 
And, I, and I'm like, okay, because he loves the Millennium Falcon. He, he recently made a beautifully detailed model of it. Because uh -huh. um, he's a, he's, Jim, Jim is a matte painter and he's, he's a very good artist. So he painted details on his model, which probably is better than anyone's model a homemade model of the Millennium Falcon. Outside the of the actual one they found. Outside of the actual one. Uh, here's a couple photos of it. Courtesy and actually Jim. Jim's looks better. And actually Jim's probably looks better. And he said the circle deflector dish is back, which got knocked off in Return of the Jedi. Oh. And they had that stupid curved one. Yeah. And I looked in the trailer and they show it flying through a, the, the, the vortex and the circle deflector dish is back. There's a Palpatine laugh. We see Leia holding the A New Hope medallion from the awards ceremony. And another thing, Rey has Luke's lightsaber, which was utterly destroyed in The Last Jedi. Also from Disney's perspective, everyone is dead. There are no new Jedis, and there's nowhere forward to go. You can only go back. <laughs> Right? <laughs> so, you're saying they fucked it up so bad, they have to go back in time. Yes. And it has something to do with the Death Star. And also, another thing too, like, there are, there's Maz Kanata, who's, who's kind of a psychic. I am no Jedi, but I know the Force. There's something special about her. We have weird bounty hunters, we have the underground, you know, the community of thieves and, you know, uh, that sort of thing. So I think there is going to be some kind of time travel device. Uh, and I don't know how all this is going to work or why, but I believe that the Death Star's wreckage has something to do with it. Because when we see them approaching the Death Star, they're walking, Ray has a sack with her and she's holding a bag and it's a big heavy bag and it's like this big. And it's just for a second, she's holding some kind of bag with something in it. And it could just be a travel bag, yeah. but it's pretty big. And I'm like, what's in that bag? And so maybe the death, second Death Star's core was powered by some kind of supreme power source and it still kind of exists. Uh, I don't know, think about it. Bring Luke back, you, you, you can travel to the past, you can, uh, you can do whatever you want, you can bring back Yoda, you could bring back any character you want, you can fix the timeline via uh, uh, an Abrams-esque, uh, uh, Kelvin slash Prime universe. I mean, where do you go forward from here? Wow, that's such a stupid thing to do in Star Wars, but... It hasn't been done. Though. It hasn't been done. And J.J. Abrams literally said, fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it, I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. And, and if you think about it, Endgame was successful, it was popular, and you've got a comic book writer guy writing this movie, mm -hmm. you know? Because I don't, I don't have much else in my notes because I got... I got nothing to work on to predict. Like, like Finn, what the fuck do you even do with Finn? That's what I mean. He learns to, he, does Finn learn to put away his own wants and fight for the greater good again? Like he did in the last two movies? Because he had the same exact character arc in two films? Well, that was kind of something else I wanted to bring up was, I was thinking about Star Wars and the original Star Wars. And you know, it's been talked to death, of course. Yeah. Um, there's nothing else to say about it. But the reason why that movie worked was he had three main characters who were very relatable and had very clear character arcs. It was definitely the prequels when things started to rely less on the characters. You say less, I'd say not at all. Not at all, almost not at all on the characters, their emotional arcs, their character arcs, their, their story, their relatability, and more on the details. It was a throwaway line in Jedi when Vader's like, oh, I see you've constructed a new lightsaber. I see you have constructed a new lightsaber. And then then that just line where it's just like, I see you got a new lightsaber. Uh, then it became like, oh. Jedis build their own lightsaber and they used a special crystal that they meditate over from the one planet that the crystals exist on, Medtar 5. Medtar 5 was blessed by an ancient Sith priest who converted to the Jedi Order in 1800 BBY. That's the shit that makes <laughs> no difference. That's the stuff that doesn't matter because at all. Because Darth Vader said, you built a new lightsaber. And then another line too. Yes, too old. Yes. Too old to begin the training. Well, then that must mean you have to start a Jedi training when you're four. 
Hey! That's where George Lucas did not understand his own creation. He did not understand why it worked. He, then he said, ah, I, gotta, I gotta build this world of all these details, de and then the politics, I mean, we have all talked about that, the Senate, and then, and then, blah. The, the big problem with Force Awakens and why it only half worked, um, they had character arcs. They weren't all necessarily completed in that movie. All the character arcs in A New Hope were completed by the end of the film because they thought that was going to be the only film. Uh -huh. Force Awakens focused on the characters and didn't really finish it, but it was an okay start. And I think that's why it kind of worked for me when I watched it. I think the most interesting thing to come out of The Last Jedi was the, the Rey and Kylo Ren possible relationship or emotional connection. I think the possible Rey teaming up with Ren to run the First Order could have been, that could have been something interesting you could have done, but they, eh, no. Yeah, when those two were having their like forced communications and, and there was like kind of weird sexual tension and him kind of being on the fence about being evil and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that's like, Kind of similar to the Luke and Vader, you're my father, related. Um, but then we've never really had that with a good guy and a bad guy kind of being, I don't know, in love or kind of attracted to each other where there's like, it, not just I want to turn you back to the good side or I want to turn you to the dark side, but at the same time we're also in love. It's kind of weird yeah. and, and it was different. And yeah. then they followed it up in the end. I just want to kill you now. They, they could have done a lot of interesting things I hate everything you've done to my character. I mean, really, at the at the end of uh, the Last Jedi, the only the only plot point we have is the good guys need to beat the bad guys. Yeah. That's all we, That's the only story hook we have at the end of that movie. It's it's awful. That's beautiful. I, I guess we got what, 25 members of the rebellion. I guess that's an obstacle. Re regrow the rebellion. I. Or do they just, they're just gonna do a time jump and there'll be a rebellion again? How do we build a rebellion from this? There's 25 of them, what are they going to do? They've effectively lost the war. I mean, come on. Again, it's very much a Avengers Thanos situation <laughs> where they, they are in desperate, desperate times and they are in desperate need. Mm. I think Luke has taught Rey how to time travel. You think his ghost is gonna come and teach her how to force time travel? I don't know. It, it, it could be uh, like the inverse of the Star Trek Discovery situation where they, instead of jumping 900 years to the future, they jump 900 years to the past. <laughs> that very well could be Darth Vader flying that TIE fighter trying to kill Rey <laughs> because he knows she's, Luke, Luke's force ghost taught her how to time travel and, and go back to the, the Knights of the Old Republic and those kind of stories, you know? Because we got to set up a new trilogy, right? Yeah, yeah. We, can't, we cannot go forward I don't think Oscar Isaac is going to do this anymore. I don't think Daisy Ridley. I don't think these characters are signed past three films. So we have to create a new trilogy. And like you've always said, Star Wars is just out of gas in yeah. terms of stories. Yeah. Giant planet killing machine and the First Order wants to conquer everybody because they're bad. Yeah. And then a, a Sith Lord who's in charge of the First Order with a red lightsaber and uh, a space battle and everybody fights at the end. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you do? You go bonkers. You, you go to the past, you time travel, and you retcon, you go back to some ancient period in, in Star Wars history where some crazy shit was happening and you, you create new trilogies from scratch. Ray retcons everything. Star Wars fans might hate it. I'll think it's a glorious mess. <laughs> If they start doing like convoluted time travel shit in a Star Wars movie, I'll think it's a glorious mess. I think I'm gonna make another prediction. This is gonna be our least accurate predictions video. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that they can make new trilogies that take place hundreds of years ago and the, the, the vast history of Jedi versus Sith, right? Mm -hmm. I think logically we're probably correct in saying Kylo Ren and, and Rey are gonna have a lightsaber fight, right? We've seen a still of that. I think they fight, on, I'm assuming, on the wreckage of the Death Star. It'll be uh, 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 First Order and Kylo Ren wanna completely wipe out the Resistance. And they're just a smattering of people running around. They're jumping from planet to planet, blah, 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 blah. 
We know Kylo Ren is basically irredeemable at this point. He can't live and just be like, hey, I'm Kylo Ren, I'm, uh, I'm good now, because he's done too many bad things. Yeah. Movie-wise speak, movie speaking. He can die, he can have a change of heart, but he has to die, maybe saving others. So I think him and Rey are gonna fight a lot. They're gonna laser sword fight. Then we're gonna have some big epic showdown where Luke comes back, maybe not in human form, in ghost Luke form, and says, I've transcended to Luke the White. I'm a spiritual being of, of all good energy, and I'm awesome. <laughs> And, uh-oh, my polar opposite, the evil spiritual energy of Lord Sidious, the, the, the bad guy, yeah. uh, we are going to shoot lasers at each other and, and fight in the ethereal plane, and it's going to blow up this whole planet and cancel each other out. The, the good side and the dark side will cancel each other out once this big battle is going to, Kylo Ren will say, uh, I'm injured. Go, I'm turned good, Ray and your friends. I'm gonna help you get on the Millennium Falcon so you could fly away while Luke chokes the Emperor. So <laughs> it'll, it'll be like the end of Star Trek V. I couldn't help but notice your pain. My pain? It runs deep. Share it with me. So they're gonna explode and, and Ray will realize that the force is temporarily gone for a few hundred generations. That, something like that could happen. <laughs> a, a fan pleaser, you, you, but, but maybe a little, a, little, a little twinkle of hope at the end. Oh, it can't end. It can't end. That's the sad thing, it can't end. It will end. There's just gonna be more and more of these things. Star Wars Never will. gonna stop. Never end. It's the dumbest thing in the world to bring the Emperor back, but it's gonna be the most fun part of the movie and you know it. You know it's gonna be the best thing they do in the fucking trilogy, even though it's the dumbest thing they can do. Because we all love Emperor Palpatine. He's too good a character. Yeah. <laughs> I love being evil. <laughs> it's gonna be great, his scenes. But his, his old, old, old man body won't be there, it can't be. They'll just come back, he'll possess somebody or he'll reincarnate, it won't matter. Or maybe he'll be like scarred. He's yeah. all burnt up. He's just burnt up. He's like a charred corpse. Oh, the Ewoks will worship him. That's great. The Ewoks will worship Emperor Palpatine. He'll be, the, we'll, we'll see the Ewoks like fortress and there'll be like a little throne they built out of like twigs and his charred corpse is just gonna be sitting in it. There's like, yeah, there's like an underground version of like, like an Ewok death cult. Like they're like Satan worshippers for Ewoks. They're just like they have like red eyes and they live underground. They'll be they'll be like sacrificed Ewok skulls all over his altar. Yes, that's how he eats. <laughs> that would be so fucking awesome if he just looked like he looked like just like a charred rotting corpse, but he was just barely alive. Maybe maybe he's like giving the Ewoks like dark energies and like the Ewoks have like glowing purple eyes. They're like evil Ewoks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're, they're like a death cult, like yeah. a Satan cult. And, and he, he gives them powers and they protect him and they, they, they keep him alive down in the, the, the bowels of the broken down Death Star. <laughs> the wreckage of the Death Star. Oh, so they've been nursing him back to health, yeah. the Ewoks. Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. He, he eats them, he consumes their energy. And he sits on, yeah, a big, big throne of like machine parts that he built. <laughs> And, but, but he's finally been able to reach Kylo Ren. His force power has been building this whole time. This whole yeah. time. That's how the film he, will start. He suddenly sent out a telepathic message to, to influence Snoke to turn Kylo Ren evil so we can get Kylo well, Ren there. We'll, we'll ignore that. I, I think it'll open with Kylo Ren just like he'll, he'll be sleeping and uh, Kylo arise. Darth, Ky Darth Dar Ren. Darth Ren, Ren. okay. Darth Ren. And then Kylo Ren will open his eyes. I have found my new apprentice. And he'll be the one who tells him to reassemble his helmet. <laughs> put your helmet back together. Couldn't he just build a new helmet? Like, why did he need to, why did he need to put the old one back together? And that isn't the biggest, like, symbol of we're going back on what everything The Last Jedi did. Just, he's actually putting the old helmet back together. It's literal. In the, in the Last Jedi trailer, he smashes it. In this trailer, oh, I just, I've rebuilt it. Fuck yeah. it. No. Oh, we're we're going back on back all that. together, right. right. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe Palpatine, because then he could put his, like, hood on and... Yeah! 
that and still be alive. <laughs> oh, that's so great. They're not gonna do it, but that's so great. I think, I, yeah, I think decimated, barely alive, corpse-like Palpatine survives somehow, inexplicably. And he's been rebuilding his strength all this time. He come, he's coming back. He's coming back, Mike. But, but, but then how do you bring Luke back? He gets reincarnated to the Force to counter Palpatine. But in Luke's body? In sure. Mark Hamill's body? Sure. Just like, just like Gandalf. Just like Gandalf. I don't know, Well, it's a, it's a long-standing tradition in fantasy that the wizard character can re-emerge re from the mist. It's a long-standing tradition. Okay, so and this is what we're doing with Luke now. It's Luke's turn to be the old Gandalf-like wizard. Luke, Luke uh, that, that's the one positive is that Luke did vanish. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting because Palpatine didn't vanish. He, he literally got blowed up. We didn't see him get blowed up. We just saw him fall. No, he falls into... His force protected him from the explosion. Okay, right? I guess I guess you could just make up any BS. That's but... how the force works. That's yeah. the beautiful part about the force. It's extremely ill-defined. The force is just like shit you brought out of a cookie, uh, a fortune cookie. And there's a philosophy built around that nonsense. And that's the force. It could be anything. Well, it was very specifically defined in The Phantom Menace when it was the count of midichlorians in your bloodstream. But it's also a force that binds everything, and it also lets you run really fast when you need to run really fast. It lets you jump really high only when you need to jump really high. It lets you do the Jedi mind trick, but only when it's convenient on certain people. So Palpatine falling into the the, the hot plasma energy core of a giant well, he used planet the, the, killing he, machine. He used the ancient Sith technique of force shield, force heat shield. Well, it took a large toll on his force, and it took 40 years to recharge his force. Okay, okay. So, but but the, the Death Star exploding, literally, from the inside out? His force protected him when it, when it, it blew up and crashed on Endor. But that's, that's, why, that's why it took him 40 years. Okay, okay. All right. I'll buy it. <laughs> Is he going to, like, like, replace, like, his arm with, like, parts he scrapped from the Death Star? Is he going to have, like, a robot hand and part of a robot face? He will have the most pimp cane that the Ewoks carved for him yeah. out of California Redwood. Oh, when Luke's reborn, too, they're going to make a deal of like showing like he has an actual hand now. Oh, yeah. The yeah. robot hand will be gone. It's like, I have been reborn. Look. Look. Look at the... Ooh, audience, look. All these are great ideas, Rich. Mm -hmm. All these are great <laughs> ideas. <laughs> it's funny how we've talked almost not at all about any of the characters from the new trilogy. <laughs> They're just like they're just like beige filler <laughs> for for things from the past that that are much more interesting. It was a resource they squandered. Yeah. That was the that was the one thing I was excited about after the Force Awakens. The reason I didn't completely pan it, even though yeah, it's a rehash of a New Hope, but I like the new characters. And after the Last Jedi, eh. <laughs> I legitimately like the Ewoks worshiping Palpatine. I do too. That's a great idea. Cause that's how you, nobody likes the Ewoks, but if you turn the Ewoks like evil and make them, you just change the design just enough to make them creepier, suddenly I think they'd be cool. You make them a little bit less chubby. Maybe their, their worship of Palpatine, that all that dark negative energy has like made them a little bit more emaciated. Yeah, yeah. So they're not cuddly anymore. Yeah, they're just sort of, they're kind of gross. They're, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They're, they're a different sect of Ewok yeah. that, that are, they're, they're more sinister. They're, they're corrupted. Yeah, right. I like it. I like it. They're, Let's go with it. They're starving because when the uh, Death Star crashed, it burnt up the forest. It's fucked up their environment. The forest we see Kylo Ren fighting in, those don't look like leafy trees. Those look like burnt out dead trees. That's on Endor. The Ewoks had nothing to eat. They're going to be emaciated and they're going to worship Palpatine. It was never a franchise that was built for longevity. It was a fairy tale. It was a fucking fairy tale. They told the story. It was done 40 years ago. It was done. They, they told the story and then they just they can't stop. It made too much money. They can't stop. It's too big to fail. Star Wars, is, it's too big to fail. We got to keep pumping money into it. There has to be Star Wars for some reason. But it is fun to speculate. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting question because they have to do something to keep, to keep doing it, to keep doing it. And do they just tell the same story again with the with the Empire and a Rebellion, just three more movies about that? Another generation removed, or? You literally could do that. 
Sometimes there's endings, and sometimes endings mean new beginnings. Do you do time travel? As long as you have Zor Zorba Bliss, a new female bounty hunter who kind of looks like Boba Fett. Whoa, whoa, everyone's fascinated. Look at that cool costume. Like, that's what I mean by surface level. Doesn't matter who she is, what she does, anything. It looks neat. It's a shiny object in front of a cat. That's all it is at this point. <laughs> I think J.J. Abrams' fuck it is, is, is going to have a resounding impact on the Star Wars community. I hope, I hope he does. I do too. I it, hope he does. You kind of have to shake things up at this point. But whenever they shake Star Wars up, it's terrible. They did that, they did that with the prequels. Let's, let's, what about the Senate? Let's do something different. Oh my god! Oh my god!